Hello and welcome everybody body, to the 8th episode of my Creoline Design podcast, a podcast about knitting and spinning and other fiber crafts um, from Rotterdam in the Netherlands. My name is Elina and you can find me on the web uh, on Ravery, Instagram and Etsy as Creoline Design. Um, this is the ninth episode already. Wow. <laughs> So um, welcome everybody, thanks for subscribing, or if you just watch this one time, it's so much fun to see that you like hearing me talk about all this nonsense. <laughs> so yeah, welcome and happy new year. It's the 6th of January 2019 today. Um, so it's we're a week in the new year already but still i haven't seen you before so i haven't seen you yet so happy new year to everybody um yeah that's something i have to say at the beginning of the episode before i start talking about knitting and stuff in the netherlands you are allowed to buy fireworks and use your fireworks at new year's eve not before new year's eve not after new year's eve at New Year's Eve, but there are always some people who think it's funny to, you know, scare the hell out of people when it's not New Year's Eve anymore. <laughs> so if you hear a loud bang every now and then, don't worry, it's not a bomb that's exploding, it's just very annoying people that are playing with fireworks. So that's something I had to say. Oh, and something else, uh, yeah, you've probably seen it directly, I'm wearing my glasses today. I don't think I did wear my glasses before on the podcast. I wear my glasses regularly. I usually wear my contact lenses, but that's when I go outside. I almost always wear them when I go outside. I don't wear them when I'm inside and I don't have plans to go outside now. So I'm wearing my glasses. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, and something else. The last two episodes, I had to stop and pause and close the curtains because of the sun today there won't be a sun the clouds are so thick and gray that it would take a really strong sun to get through that so we don't get sun so i don't have to get up to close any curtains so let's get started because i have some really exciting news and i don't want to talk about you know i don't want to talk for like an hour today so i'm just gonna start right away and you know what's very exciting i got a loom a weaving loom oh sorry for the shaking <laughs> i got a weaving loom yeah that's right um i've been wanting to try um weaving for a very long time now and um I don't know for how long, but a long time. And I had been looking for a new long, new loom in the beginning when I started to have that wish, but it's a bit expensive, very expensive actually for a few pieces of wood and you pay like 200 to 300 euros and that's just the basic, very simple loom. Well, I wasn't gonna, I, first, I don't have that money. Second, if I had the money, I wasn't going to pay that much for that. So, and then I lens you have this website called Marsplaats.nl, which is basically like a kind of a eBay, but just for in the Netherlands. And I've been checking it out quite regularly to see if there were any weaving looms. Um, but usually the ones that you find are the ones that are for children, that are plastic or that are have very wide spacing that you really need to use bulky yarn or worsted yarn to make something that looks okay so i didn't want that and you have the ones that are incomplete that someone just found on the attic of their great grandmother that passed away and they don't really know what it is and um, it's incomplete and not in a good condition and then you have the very big ones the like the official oh, oh professional looms so i didn't want none of those i just wanted a normal table loom that works and um yeah i finally found one so i bought it it was only 30 euros and i'm loving it let me grab it it's 
behind me because it's still quite big. It is a stable loom, but it's too big to put on my lap. So I will show it to you. Got it here on the couch. Yeah. Wait, let me put it there, like this. This is it. This is my table loom. It has a rigid handle and it's a 40 by 10, 40, 40 slash 10. I don't know. I'm not very much. I don't, ha I don't have any knowledge about weaving yet. So this is, and this is what I weft now, what I've been weaving. Um, it's, this is going to be a scarf simple in plain weave. Plain weave is what I like the best. So yeah, it's fun. I, I like doing it. Uh, I do need, wait, let me I do need to buy some um, table, how do you call them? So I can attach them to my table, table screw maybe? I don't know, I don't know the word, but I want want it to be stuck at my table because I get pain in my shoulders if I sit on it for an hour and yeah, that's not good. So, but that's my, let's say, yeah, let's not count it. <laughs> officially, no, you can call it my second, but I think officially it's my fourth project. Well, let me explain it. What's, what's on there is just an acrylic cheap yarn that I wanted that I had in my stash and that I thought would be suitable for weaving and it is suitable and it's weaving up quite nicely so it's just it's soft glitter yarn from the action for Dutch people is from the action it's a hundred gram 235 meters it's acrylic yarn 89% acrylic and 2% polyester in sport weight kind of sport weight and it sparkles and sparkles are always good but let me tell about the project because I bought this loom on our way to my boyfriend's parents in Germany for Christmas. And um, when we got there, I didn't bring any yarn for it. Um, and when we got there, my boyfriend's mom always knit, uh, also knits. So she has quite a lot of yarn and she had some stash. And as soon as we told her, well, on the way over here, we picked up a weaving loom. She said, oh, let me find some yarn for you so you can try it. And she was very excited. <laughs> um, she, she seemed even more excited than me that I was going to try it. So um, she dove into her stash and she found me a lovely ball of sparkling six ply sock yarn, which was perfect for this project. Um, I don't know if it's, I think it was like, it didn't have a ball band, but it was like Regia yarn or Opal, something like that, a six ply yarn. And um, so I started weaving. Of course, I started off totally wrong because you have to, when you um, put on your warp, which are the lengthwise threads, when you put those on, you have to go from back to front. And you can make the front as long as you want, but the back has to be attached. Well, I thought, you know, I just know how this works. I don't have to look it up. I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> Never woven before. So, of course, that was going to go. That was a very good idea, of course. But I messed it up, of course. So, I instead of going from the back to the front, I make the front as long as I could. I went from the front to the back and make the back as long as I could, which was very annoying, but it learned me the lesson that I needed to learn. Um, and I just, it was usable. It just wasn't comfortable. So I started weaving and I made a, a very fun, yeah, it was a fun yarn and it ended up like a really fun fabric. Um, I can only use you, I can only show you, I really have trouble speaking today. You know, it's really all day. I just cannot talk normal. It's I pronounce everything wrongly. Also in Dutch, not just in English. In every language, I try. I try. So, um, I did use the fabric already for a project, which I will show you in a minute. But the fabric turned out so nice. 
this is what I got left over. And it sparkles. It has a bronze kind of sparkle to it. And I really love how it looks like a plate, a picnic plate. Um, and this is also left over. Basically, the fabric I made was it was attached to it, uh, each other and it was twice as wide. It was double the length so, uh, and I used, apparently I used the middle because these don't fit together. <laughs> and it was just one piece of fabric that I already used. Um, but weaving takes up quite a lot of yarn, especially the warp takes up a lot of yarn. The weaving itself, not, but the warp takes a lot of yarn. Um, so I pretty quickly ran out of this yarn. Well, when I had double the length, like this long, I ran out of this beautiful yarn. So I had to use a, a different yarn that she had, um, that my, a fruit fly, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, a different yarn than my mother-in-law had in her stash. Uh, it was a blue cotton and I just continued with that one. And she liked it so much that I kept this first fabric and that second fabric I I just you know I finished it and it looked pretty and she was super excited about it so I made it her third Christmas gift just a little extra something because she, she liked it so much and she was really surprised when she got it but she liked it a lot but let me talk about this because I used it in a project right away I wanted to a weaving loom to make fabrics for sewing so I had a fabric and I did some sewing. What I made went totally wrong. It was not my day for sewing, but <laughs> I whatever I could do wrong, I did do wrong. I didn't do anything right, but it still ended up quite a cute little project back. And let me show it to you. This is it. With the weaving at the top, the woven fabric at the top, and uh, a suede, fake suede. It's not from a brand or anything. This is just something I bought at the local market. So nothing fancy or special, but it looks suede, kind of like, and it's very soft. So, and it has a zipper. I don't even start, let me know that you start about what, what, what went wrong on this project right? because everything went wrong. But I put in a lovely lining in the same kind of color as the woven fabric. And it's, everything went wrong, but it's still quite a cute bag. But it's not something I would sell. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> For my own personal use, but I like it a lot. And look, the the thingy, very professional name with a cat hair, of course. Um, has the same color as the fabric too. So yeah, I I like it, even though I messed up everything. It's a really cute, fun little project bag. So, and these will become a project bag to one day on a day that I have a good sewing day. <laughs> um, oh, what I'm wearing, uh, I wanted to tell you this earlier, but I think about it now. So let's tell you now. What I'm wearing is a hand knit cardigan, but it's not hand knit by me. I cannot take the credits for it. This uh, cardigan was knitted by my great grandmother and it wasn't supposed to be for me she knitted it and um, she had just had it finished and it was laying around when I visited her and um, I told her oh wow, that's such a nice such a nice cardigan and uh, yeah she told me I could have it she had actually knitted for my mother but if I tried it on and it would fit me well I was I think I was 16 around the time, or 17 maybe, 17 maybe, and she said, well, if it fits you well, you can have it, because you were first, and you said you love it, so, and I'm not sure your mother will love it, so it's for you if you want it, so, of course, I wanted it, <laughs> so I kept it, it's hand-knit by my great-grandmother, 
Um, I think it's 100% acrylic yarn. I'm not sure. But she was always about uh, cheap yarns. And as I said before, I don't mind acrylic yarns at all. It could be a blend with acrylic and wool. So I'm careful with the washing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's acrylic yarn. But I didn't... I haven't worn it a lot because, you know, it has pretty buttons. Now, it started out with gold buttons. These gold buttons. And I'm not a gold person. Gold can be pretty. Um, I find gold pretty when it's very subtle in a little bracelet or little necklace or earrings or something like that. I'm not a person who wears gold. On their clothing this was just too much and because of these gold buttons i didn't wear it very often so and it ended up in my closet and at some point i was like you know i want to wear that cardigan it's a pretty cardigan i'm gonna change the buttons on it then i found in my grandmother's stash in her button stash i found some black buttons i thought black would be okay i think black could be okay but the buttons I picked. How could I pick these buttons? Anyway, these. The black. Uh, they have a shine. Yeah. Black. Wait, it's a flower and they're pretty thick. So I had put these on. But as you can see, that's not so much better. <laughs> so I had put these on and it still ended up. In the closet because I didn't like the buttons. So somewhere last year I was like this is crazy. I have this beautiful cardigan. My great grandmother isn't around anymore um, since I think four or five years and I loved her and I love this cardigan and I just want to wear it. So um, I put on some wooden buttons that I think are perfect. And now I do wear it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, yeah. That's what I'm wearing. Hand knit. But I cannot take the credits for it. Then, next up. It has been Christmas. And Christmas with my boyfriend's family means gifts. Christmas gifts. And a lot of gifts. And I have some really cool things to show you. First of all, I made some Christmas gifts. And they were very well received. My boyfriend absolutely loved his hat. He unwrapped it. And he saw it was this hat. And he was just looking at it. He, he loved it. And he put it on his hat. And although it was really warm in the room. Some people were just sitting around in a t-shirt. With short sleeves. He, he put it on his hat. And he had it all on his hat. Whole evening. And the next day he was like. Shall we walk the dog? Because then I can then I can wear my hat. <laughs> and <laughs> later in the day, his mother was like, oh, will you walk the dog, please? And he was like, sure, yeah, because then I can wear my hat. <laughs> and when he, got, when he got home, he, he told me that when he got home, he normally he puts his hat in his pocket, in a, his jacket pocket. And he just hang, hangs his coat and then that's it. And he was like, yeah, I had to clean up my cabinet because I have to lay my hat down there so I can see it <laughs> so yeah he really loved the hat <laughs> and um, my mother-in-law um, she got also she got this that woven fabric thingy and she I made her a little project bag and a needle cozy and she loved them both and she was showing them to everybody and she was oh I only got handmade gifts from her and they were so pretty so yeah that, that's so much fun if people love your your gifts and especially if they are handmade so they were very well received and my mother loved her socks she likes them and they fit well so yeah all good and then of course we need to talk about all the things I got oh my god I got so many beautiful things um let me start with my boyfriend's mother, she, I have a little bag here. Let's get the bag. I try not to make too much noise with it. Or no, let's start with what my boyfriend got me. He has these 
original gift ideas. I don't know where he got them, but he's really original and they are so much fun. You know what I got from him? i only going to show my, my yarn related um, gifts, of course. He gave me <laughs> two tickets. We are gonna do, we're gonna walk with alpacas. <laughs> we're go going on a walk with actual alpacas. Look, yeah, they are just the tickets. In Brille, Brille is a little village in Zeeland. It's a province in the Netherlands. And we are going to walk with alpacas. I don't know how he got the ID, but it's it's an amazing game. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> I it, There's no date on it. We can pick a date. It has to be in a weekend. I think I want to wait till the weather is a bit less wintry. So it went for a day when it's really nice to be outside all day. And we're gonna walk with alpacas. How fun is that? Look, look at this little picture of that alpaca. Yeah. We're gonna do that. So much fun. Okay, that's really, really fun. Okay, and his mother, his mother gifted me yarn. So, look at this. And this is Schoppelwolle in Das Paar, in the colorway um, Freunde. Freunde is German for friends, and Schoppelwolle is German, of course, and Das Paar means the pair. So, um, Schoppelwolle in the colorway Freunde. And it's so much fun, Schoppelwolle always has this warning that knitting can be addictive. If you haven't ever knit with shopper wool, then you haven't seen it yet. But yeah, knitting can be addictive. And no, knitting can, it's not like knitting can be addictive. It's knitting is addictive. <laughs> um, so yeah, a really fun yarn. It is das paar, which means a pair, which means that these, uh, this looks like one skein, but in the skein are two exactly the same skeins of yarn. So you can knit exactly two identical socks. But I am a person who only needs 50 grams of yarn, of sock yarn for a pair of socks, for a pair, a complete pair. And I don't wear matching socks. So I just need, I'm gonna go and wind just one uh, of the skeins. Uh, so that's 50 grams and just need a full pair of socks out of that one for me, for myself. And um, it has a very interesting striping patterning kind of thing going on in the yarn, just like with Regia and Opal yarns. And I think I'm gonna uh, use a little slip stitch pattern on the front of the foot and on the leg. Just very simple to bring it up a bit. I think I'm gonna do um, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. And then the next row knit, and then the next row slip one, knit one, slip one. Uh, the opposite of what I said before, <laughs> and then knit a row. So a four row repeat to just break it up a bit. I think that will be really fun. But this is not the only thing she got me. Tom, 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 tom. This is a black envelope. And if I turn it around, tom, tom, tom. See if you can read it. Stephen and Penelope Fine Yarns, heading, Hand Knitting and Crochet in Amsterdam. Yep, this is a gift certificate for Stephen and Penelope. So one of these days, I'll have to go to Amsterdam and pick some yarns. <laughs> How exciting. So a really great gift. And um, then I love sparkling yarn. And um, Belinda, the, the mother of my boyfriend, she has one of her best friends is also a knitter. And we are also friends on Ravelry. She's called Andrea. And she doesn't like spark. She likes looking at sparkling yarns, but she doesn't wear sparkly yarns and she doesn't knit with it. And um, Belinda told her that I do knit with it. So if 
Andrea would have something in her stash that she with sparkles that she didn't use um, or she wanted to get rid of that she could give it to me so it's not really a Christmas gift but I really see it as a Christmas gift <laughs> so this is from Andrea so the friend of my boyfriend's mother yeah oh my god this is such an amazing yarn look at this It is Lang Mille Colori. Oh, that's upside down. Lang Mille Colori Socks and Lace Deluxe. In the. What's this colorway? There's no colorway name. There's supposed to be a colorway name, right? Wait, 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 wait. Hmm? Oh, yeah, the colorway. Oh, it's either. 859.0006 or 9314. One of these is the colorway. You can find it out yourself. <laughs> so it's so beautiful. Look at these colors. Seriously, these are not normally my colors. They don't show up very well on the screen. They are much prettier in real life. I don't know what I'm going to make with them yet. But they are so pretty. They are going to be something so beautiful. And then, because um, my mother-in-law... Oh, and they will knit up like this. That's the colorway. But every skin is every skin is different. So, um, yeah. She got so excited about me weaving that she dove into her stash. And she gave me all her stash yarn that she wouldn't use. So, I got a little bag here. It's not full, but I'm going to show you the things. Um, these are the alpaca wool. I'm going to show you what's in here. And one of the things is this yard. <gasps> this is not showing up well. This is a neon fluorescent green which is really not showing does it show up better around here a little better but it's it's not this it looks kind of pastel pastel color on the screen but it's really very very bright and in your face and this is 100 grams of each each green and blue uh 100 merino wool in DK weight. Now I was thinking about making felted felted slip, slipper <laughs> felted slippers with these. So I'm thinking about that, but that might not be enough yarn. I really have to think about it. It's something that I really want to look at because I love this color. Maybe if I keep it closer, it will show up better. No, because it's so bright in real life. It really it hurts your eyes if you look at it too long. Well, anyway, I want to wear these somewhere that I can see them all the time, like a pair of slippers. Uh, because it's also something I would not wear outside. So a pair of slippers would be perfect, but I want felted slippers. And that might just not be enough yarn. I'll have to figure something out for that. But yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty. Then I got some, sorry for the back. Let me do it really fast. Um, it's this leftover yarn. These colors are actually showing up really, really well. Um, but these are a blend with linen. They are 30% of 30 grams of each color. So it's not enough for anything. The colors scream to me. I want to be a hat. I want to be a hat. Make me into a hat, please. But 60 grams of yarn is just not enough for a hat. It's DK weight yarn, I think. It's all without a ball band. And, um, but it's with linen. And linen really isn't this linen. It's not soft. I wouldn't want to wear it on my skin. So I don't know what these will become. It is a very pretty yarn. So it has to become something pretty. 
Then I got some Noro left over. Oh! Oh, I don't know which Noro it is. But it could be a feltable Noro. Oh. I don't... I think it's the wool one. I don't think this is one with silk. Oh, then I could... Yeah, but that doesn't match with these. No, we'll see. I have some more Noro upstairs, so maybe I'll, I will just put it with the other Noro. Then I got some cotton yarn that I used with for in the weaving project for her. Uh, and it combined really well with this. So some cotton yarn. Don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of it. But it will become something someday. And a tiny little bit of leftover six ply sock yarn. In a very pretty color. Pretty, pretty, pretty. So much, so much new yarn. <laughs> and so much pretty yarn. Tum, tum, tum. Let's put it all away pretty quickly. These, oh, these colors. And these are, this one is so much fun too. I'm gonna cast on this, this one next. And, oh, I love them all. I love them all. So, let's put the noisy back away. Um, then, as I'm, as you might remember from my previous episode, I had some New Year's revolution, resolution revolutions. I really cannot talk today. <laughs> um, and um, one of them was, don't buy new yarn. Use your stash if you can. I am allowed to buy new yarn, but only if I have a specific project in mind and that I really don't have the right yarn for in my stash. Then I had, um, I want to use up all my, I want to knit all my sock whips that I have upstairs, which are quite a lot. Um, and I have to finish. My new year's resolutions were, don't buy new yarn, don't buy new yarn. Um, finish sock whips before you start a new sock. And knit more with your hand spun yarns. So I didn't. I tried. <laughs> okay, no, wait. Just keep that in mind, okay? <laughs> Just keep that in mind. That, that were the rules. I have four sock projects <laughs> right now. One of which was an old whip. Still is an old whip, but I'm working on it. The other three are new. But they don't count, and I'll, I'll explain why. Because in that bag that Belinda gave me was also a sock yarn, just a regular sing, um, fingering weight sock yarn from Opal Oregia. It was half a ball, it was 52 grams um, without a ball band. And it was, it. so I didn't know what it would knit up like, and it looked so much fun. It was a really fun yarn. And I thought, well, I can put this in my stash and then it will stay a stash for like 10 more years or I can just start it right away for as long as I'm excited excited about the yarn and I'm excited about the yarn now so I better get started on it now right so that's what I did I cast it on but it was a gift so I am allowed you know yeah <laughs> so I actually I started these the 28th of December and they are almost finished. Tom 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 no second sock syndrome. I'm already working on the cuff. They won't end up in my whip basket. So this is really good. You know look and they have heels. They always look this wonky when I just when I'm still knitting the sock they my heels always get this weird shape anyway and it's 52 grams which is always enough for a pair of socks for me as you can see I have size 37 so uh, I have small women's feet I sometimes fit um, children's socks and shoes um, 
they look fun, right? They look fun. Look, uh, close up. That orange with the yellow, I don't know why with the yellow, but really with the yellow, <laughs> makes it, makes, I don't know, it reminds me of tiger stripes. The tigers don't have yellow, I know they don't. <laughs> but for me, the combination of this orange black with yellow makes it look like a tiger. Yeah, you know, that's just me. I'm weird like that. <laughs> and they are not a match. I just, I started one from the inside and the other one from the outside of the ball. And so the stripes are the same, but in the other direction. And this too. Um, I needed this in my, oh, and look, this is all the yarn I have left for now. Um, that looks like just not enough, but I did five rows of ribbing on both of the socks. And I think I can make it to 12 to 14 rows per sock. I'm just going to add five more rows here and five more rows here. And then um, I'll do one row, one row, one, 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 until it's time to bind off. Um, it looks less yarn than it actually is. Because what's on this little skein is the amount from this blue till this blue, which is about 15 rows, 15, 16 rows, something like that. So I'll have enough to make at least five more rows on each cuff, and maybe up to 12 rows on each cuff before I have to bind off. So that uh, I think I can finish these tonight. And then I'll have a pair of socks, my first for 2019. My first 2019 socks, that would be great. I don't have finished objects, by the way, if you were wondering. No, I don't. So I was allowed to cast on these because it was a new yarn that was gifted to me. So, you know. You gotta make excuses for yourself, right? Yeah. Um, but I was also being a good girl and I picked up some a sock project from my whip basket. The reason they got in my, well, let me show them first. Otherwise you don't know what I'm talking about. Tom, tom, tom. Tom, tom, oh. Oops. Let's make them straight. They have been balled up a bit, like, yeah. Tom, tom, tom. So, let me talk a bit about this, because the reason they have been a sock whip is because this one was finished. I only have this left. It was a finished sock, and this sock was about the same length it is now. But the heels, they were too small. I didn't put in a heel. With these socks, I was planning, I started them when I was on vacation with a friend. I bought this yarn where in, I believe it was 2015 or 2016 when I was on a city trip to Riga with my friend Sigrid and I found in the yarn store I found this yarn Lang Mille Colori socks and lace with cat hair it came without the cat hair <laughs> in the colorway well the same like before it's either this or this and this is how it stripes um, and I started knitting and I um, didn't try it on and I wanted to do an afterthought heel. So where I thought the heel was supposed to be, I put in uh, a waist yarn. But the only waist yarn I had <laughs> was dental floss. So I made a row of dental floss as a waist yarn to put in an afterthought heel. But once I got the chance to fit them on, which was only at home, the heel was in the wrong place. It was like the heel was around here. It's around here. It was here now, but it was around here. It was way too small, but it was finished. The sock was finished. It was this long and it was finished. And I just felt so sad about it. I didn't want to undo it. So it ended up in the whip basket. 
but I love the yarn and this stitch pattern, which looks quite complicated, but is really very easy. Um, it's from the Leyburn sock. It's, I believe it's free. Yeah, it's free on Ravelry. The Leyburn sock by Minty Fresh. A simple eight row slip stitch. No, not slip stitch. It's with the strands. Uh, I can't get the name. But yeah, but I'm so glad I picked them up again. I frocked them all the way till where the waist yarn for the heels was and I knitted a few more rows like I don't know two pattern repeats I think and then I put it in the heel in the right place and yeah um I have did this much yarn left is what I wanted to say on the first sock <laughs> this little amount of yarn left on the first sock I was thinking of I think I will just make them short socks. They're not that short, just shorter. Um, do one more pattern repeat and then use the rest for the ribbing. I think that will be fine. And I'll do the same on the second sock. And then I have like 60 grams left over from this for this yarn that I can use in some other pretty project because it's a beautiful yarn. It just it doesn't really show up well on screen but the colors are so beautiful but long mille colori these these colors from socks and lace and sock and lace looks are so beautiful so so pretty this blue is actually exactly the same color as my wall but as you can see it won't show up right but it's still pretty, it's very pretty. And I'm really glad I picked them up. They're not finished yet, but they will be soon. No worries. No hurries. Hey. <laughs> so that was for this, this project. One of the New Year's resolutions was to um, use more hand spun yarns. So I am using up some very old hand spun yarn. Um, I started this project because it's another sock, and I know I wasn't allowed to start another sock until I finished another sock project, but I had taken these out and I had been working on them, but I, it has a pattern and I didn't want to take them with me for Christmas because I knew that I would mess up the pattern. And I'm not at good, uh, when I'm not at home, <laughs> somehow, when I knit with double points, I'll drop them all the time. When I'm at home, it doesn't happen, but when I'm not at home, I'll drop them, so... I am not safe with them when I'm outside. I very likely to lose them at some point. So I wanted to use my small circular needles. They're 24 centimeters, I believe. Um, so I grabbed some of my stash hand spun yarn and started knitting socks with the circular. And this is how far I've gotten. They have heels. It's such a fun, crazy yarn. I don't like... I do like them. But I don't like them. <laughs> this... It's kind of childish. Um, it's not pretty. It's definitely not pretty. But they are so playful. Um, and the colors are fun. I, I don't know. I just I think they are fun socks. They are no they are not pretty socks. They are not socks that I'm very excited about or that I would show off to people. But they are fun. Look at these. They are fun. They are fun. Um, as you can see, I got a little stitch marker here. It's because I dropped a stitch. When I'm in a car, I get car sick really easily. So I cannot usually knit in a car. I can only knit on these circulars. In the car because I don't have to look. Um, because I knitted these in the car, I started at, I had the toe finished, I had the toe done, and started knitting all the way up to the heel in the car in the dark. Um, and I didn't see anything and I didn't notice that I dropped a stitch. So I'll have to tuck it in when I'm done. 
I'm finished, but that's okay. Um, they are nearly done. <laughs> they are nearly finished now. I'm at the ribbing. This one already has 10 rows of ribbing. This one only five. I'll work up to 10 on this one as well. And then look, this is all I got left. So um, I'm going to do it the same way as I'm going to do it with these socks. I'll just work until there's no, uh, until there's just enough yarn left to do a bind off. And we'll see how big or, you know, how tall they get. Um, the yarn I used, I spun, was some merino I bought on eBay. They were one of my first Rolex I made. Um, it is merino, but it was I put in a very high twist, so it's sturdy. It's, it's and it's a dense fabric. I needed a it's sport to DK weight yarn, and I needed on three millimeter needles, so. I don't worry about getting holes at all. And um, I only wear my socks at home, not issues. So I have never really had holes in my socks. Um, it was, let me check, 56 grams and 100, only 117 meters for this. That's why I put in contrasting heels. But you see, with 50 grams of yarn, I can make a pair of socks. Um, and this was the yarn I used for the contrasting Heels, still got some left over, quite a lot left over. I used only, let me check, 7 grams of this, which is only 13 meters for the heels. So I can use this again as a contrasting heel thing. Then there's one more <laughs> pair of socks. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know I said there won't, wouldn't be no more socks, but there would be more and spun yarn knitting and I wanted to knit with my hand spun yarn but only socks so I did it anyway yeah so these are they, these are not as far as the other ones the other ones I think I can finish these tonight too and then I would have two finished socks today wow I can show them as finished object next time <laughs> okay and now I have these one with a heel and one half way through the foot but this yarn let me show it up close the colors are definitely not as bright as it's showing up colors are a lot darker and I don't maybe you can see it better in the skin hmm a bit not really this um ball is <laughs> i've written it down so that's why i'm looking there it's not that i always think that way <laughs> if i think i have to look that way no it, i've written it down actually so this one was 100 grams and 170 170 the other one was 117 meters and this is 170 meters uh, it was uh, from uh, a blended fiber top from spin city uk in the nebula colorway and it has uh, a black alpaca yarn fiber uh, the white shiny fiber is tensile then i don't know if you can see the sparkles but there are purple purple bluish sparkles in here that it, yeah, you might see them. Um, there's Angelina and the rest of the fiber is um, Merino. And I have a love-hate relationship with this yarn. I have had it since the beginning. I don't know. I don't like black. Black is really not my color. I don't like the combination of green and pink and especially not green and black and especially not green and purple and those colors are in here. Um, I do love the combination of turquoise with everything <laughs> and I do love these purple sparkles. So yeah, there are some things in here that I love and I love Opka fiber. 
yeah, and they knit up, they knit up quite nice. I do like this knitted fabric, and I do like how it's striping. Um, and you really cannot see the colors properly. Maybe if I. Hmm. Mm. Um, but I don't know one day I'm knitting them and I think oh, they're so pretty so gorgeous I love them and then the next day I want to continue knitting on them and I'm like oh they're so ugly Ugh. yeah it's just one day I like them a lot I love them and the next day I hate them and there's no in-between option for me so they grow on days that I love them, and they don't grow <laughs> on days that I hate them. So, uh, well, it's weird. You have that sometimes. Or at least I have that sometimes. I don't know if you do. <laughs> I can be weird like that. You know. Okay. Um, uh, we're 51 minutes in, and I told you uh, that I wanna, didn't want to make it a long episode. Okay, I've got one more thing to tell you, and that is my... Next custom. I'm gonna cast on a project that is from my New Year's resolutions. It was already in my library and I had already bought a pattern and it's in my to knit list for 2019. So I am completely allowed to knit this pattern and I am using yarn from my stash. So there you have it. I'm really being a good girl on this one. Okay, it is the uh how oh first snowfall neck warmer how could i forget about it i i i don't know how i could forget about it i'm gonna show you a picture of it on my phone so you know what i'm talking about let me zoom it in a little bit this is the pattern it's beautiful it's a stranded Knit Call by Marianne from Running Yarn. Um, you can follow her on Instagram. She's also Running Yarn on Instagram. And if you wouldn't want to follow her for gorgeous stranded knitting, then you should definitely follow her for her for her landscape pictures. I believe she lives in Switzerland, somewhere in the mountains. But she's very often in Norway. <laughs> I don't know if it's for vacation. I think it's for vacation. And she runs marathons and um, in the most beautiful areas. And she takes pictures while she's running. And it's always with snow and mountains and just beautiful. So if you don't want to follow her for her knitting, you should follow her for her landscape pictures. She posts them both in one account. So I wanted to use some stash for this. The pattern calls for a fingering weight yarn, but the yarn that's a bit thicker than normal fingering weight yarn because her yarn asks for uh, 365 meters per 100 grams. 365 is less than usual for 100 grams of fingering weight yarns. It's, normally it's around 400 meters and this is 365. So I thought, well, I'm gonna add it up a little bit because I wanna um, knit it really snug. It is a snug scarf, a uh, coal. It's really one that stays up if you pull it up. It's not one that hangs around. It's really snug. And I want it to be very warm and with a very dense fabric. So I decided to go for a light sport weight yarn. Um, the yarn classifies, well, the manufacturer classifies the yarn as uh, weight that can be used as fingering weight with a dense fabric and it has 340 to 334 <laughs> meters per hundred gram so it's a little bit thicker than um, the yarn she uses which is totally okay I'll go down the needle size she offers two needle sizes but let me show you the yarn I'm gonna use drops alpaca yarn they go per 50 gram 50 gram is 167 meters and it's 100% opka yarn and it's very, very soft. <laughs> I love opka yarns. Um, but I only have this in white. 
and I needed a contrasting color. I was thinking, I so I decided to dye one blue. No, to dye one. <laughs> oh. I thought about dyeing it blue because the pattern is with blue and I love the blue, blue with the snowflakes. But I have quite a, a few blue um, accessories like a hat and scarves and in blue and blue is really not my color it makes me very pale and I'm a lot better with red colors so I decided well you know for for one time I don't like red that's the problem red looks really good on me but I really don't like red but I thought well for once in your life Make something that would actually look good on you and not just because you like the colors. So I decided to dye a skin in a red kind of color. I couldn't decide if I wanted, um, I wanted it to be a dark, dark red kind of color, but I couldn't decide if I just wanted it red, orange, or pink. So I started dyeing. And um, didn't really make a decision, so I just mixed it all a bit and came up with this, which is a lot darker in real life than it looks on the screen. Isn't it beautiful? It is so beautiful. It really is darker. Mm. 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 It's darker than you see it but because I couldn't decide I just decided to make it a sort of tonal it's not tonal it's a bit variegated but not really variegated <laughs> it has this this is really a dark color in real life these are very much darker it's really it's a brick like brick stone colors and this is a burnt sienna and a very dark it's very dark it's it's not at all like this. Maybe if I keep the white one next to it, it's better. Still not really, not right. But this will make such a beautiful scar. And it's not, it's because it's darker than you see it, it will not look too variegated. It will look pretty tonal. Let me open it up so you can see it. I, I, on purpose, I purposely dyed it in a way that you that it won't pull. The yarns won't pull. I don't like it. But I like it when they pull on socks or maybe on a hat when you do it intentionally, but not on in a coal with stranded knitting. So, and it's so soft. Oh, I love it. And it's such it's it's such a shame that you cannot see the proper color because it's so much darker than this. It's like, it's almost the same color as my glasses. Which do up, show up in the correct color. I don't know why these do not show up in the correct color. Anyway, I'm very much looking forward to casting on. And look at these two together. And I hear you asking, aren't you afraid that the red color bleeds into the white? No, I'm not. I am aware that... Many dyers have the problem that their red colors bleed and don't, um, yeah, that they bleed. But my red colors don't bleed. None of my colors bleed. If I dye something, they don't bleed. So no, I'm not afraid of any bleeding at all. So I'm excited about this project. It will be started in the very near future. I don't know exactly when, but in the very near future. So, uh, on that note, let me show you one more time my Christmas gift. Yes. I just have to show you them one more time. Where are the alpacas? You need to be able to see the alpacas. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, all the Christmas gifts. Yeah. Oh, look at this. 
on this very happy note, <laughs> look at this. Yes. Uh, yeah. On this very happy note, I want to say goodbye. See you next time. Have a very knitty time. Be crafty. Be happy with your knitting and your yarn. And thank you very much for watching and hearing me talk about all this random stuff. And it's been an hour, which is way too long again. Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs>